Okay, welcome back. This is Solomon here again for part two of our video um, of API management end-to-end um, -end solution or demo. In this particular demo that we're going, it's going to be multiple videos. As I mentioned on, on part one of this video, uh, which I used to walk through the API management uh, pieces or portals, I walked through the cloud management console the API management portal, which you define an API, which is what you see in front of you in here. And I kind of talked about, but I did not walk through it yet. And we will once we get to part three of this video. Um, and that's the API or the portal that allow me to define applications that I can use. So what I'm going to do right now in part two is um, show you a, a REST API that I defined in a web server application server environment. And, and basically, I'm going to count this as a, a, a layer, um, let's say the development organization. And in this case, I'm going to play the developer's hat on somebody who's providing that API. Um, and at this point, I know nothing about API management. All I know is I'm defining a REST API that I'm going to also test it. Um, so I, I, here is my Eclipse environment. I already have the API um, and, and defined. And I'm just going to walk you through it quickly, walk you through this um, um, REST API example that I'm doing. I call it Sal REST um, API. Um, and, and I'll show you the key points out of it so you can kind of understand. And I will do some of the testing um, and I will define the application server to use. Um, I will be using the Liberty Profile in here. Um, and I will show you how easy it is to kind of get up to speed um, with the game that application on. Worth mentioning that um, I will also be uploading that application. Um, so that you can just simply import it into your environment um, and, and you can just re do exactly what I'm doing in here um, and kind of follow through with the demo. Uh, the purpose of this demo is not to show you how to develop a REST API, um, but rather to just show you if you have it, um, how you deploy that application in WebSphere and how you can expose these APIs and the API management and lastly, how you can um, use the APIs that you exposed in the API management um, in an application and in this case I'm using a mobile application and I'm using the Worklight um, Studio to define that application. So there is there's something so for those of you who have not done any um, REST APIs and they want some um, tutorial on it there is a very very good video um, on YouTube that you can just simply search for and, and get access to it um, and, and it's an IBM Web Server Application Server V8 developing RESTful Web Services JAX RS. Um, this is honestly the, the one of the best videos that I've seen um, on the topic and it will take you step by step into how to create an application and it will explain to you pieces of it as well. I will be covering with you in this video um, the areas of interest to you um, and just to kind of give you a good understanding and like I said we are going to test it out um, also to make sure it's working. All right, so let's get started. The, the first thing I would like to do is I would like to go ahead and define a web server application server in my Eclipse environment. I assume that if you look at what I have, I have the, um, I think Kep Kepler, yeah, I have Kepler service release too. Um, this would work with Juno also if you wanna have Juno. Uh, one of the things that I've done is to kind of get an Eclipse plugin that would work with my environment I basically went ahead and went to Eclipse Marketplace as I showed you in here and I just um, when it comes up and I'll show you and I you can just type um, WebSphere um, and you will see the list of the plugins that relate to WebSphere one of which will be the Liberty Profile plugin which is what I'm using in here. Um, I am using and I'm going to walk you through it here quickly um, hopefully you can see it before I do as you see here is the web server application server Liberty Profile Developer Tools for Luna. And of course I have Kepler and Kepler also exists here. And here it is. That's what we're talking about in here. Okay. So you can install that and that shouldn't take too long for you to install. And beyond that you will be ready to go. So if I go to the servers directory, I mean tab, sorry, and I can right click on it here and do new server. And I can pick the web server application server Liberty Profile. Um, the runtime in this case I already have. If you do not have the runtime, um, then all you need to do is just simply click the Add button, as you see in here. So you, you click the Add button, as you see in here, and when you get in here, of course, if you already have an existing directory that you want to use, let's say you have the Liberty um, runtime installed from someplace, you can just simply point to it. 
Um, again, I'm showing you as if you're starting fresh, and in my case, um, I already have it, so I'm just gonna, I guess I'm gonna play along here. I won't download it, I just wanna show you. And you can go into new directory, and let's say I can put the place where I want my Liberty profile to exist, and web series Liberty profile, click next, and as you see, there is um, you can install a new runtime if you have the downloaded jar file, let's say from your own um, environment, or if you have it someplace in your organization, um, or, or you downloaded it separately, for example. Or if you want to actually download it within the Eclipse plugin, you could just click on download um, and install. And as you see, there's the Liberty um, repository that you can select um, whether the beta one or whether you select the latest GA release, which is 8.5.5.3. And beyond that, you just click Next and install it, and we go on from here, and it would be ready for you to use every single time. So I canceled out of this because I already have the Liberty Profile installed in my environment. Um, as you can see, just to show you, it is available here. In fact, we probably want to do it. Um, this is where I have it installed. Um, and I'm just going to open that directory here to make sure that um, there you go. Okay, so, th so we can reference this um, later. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And as you see, I want to create a directory. And uh, I'm going to name my ser sorry, the server. And I clicked on New Server. I want to create my server to be Solomon World Bank Server. I click Finish. And as you see, now I have, um, and I click Finish at this point. And as you see in here, I already have, I just created an application server. It's called Solomon World Bank Server. Um, and if you look at the configuration file of that server, by expanding it, clicking on configuration, this is how simple and easy um, it is. Um, there's not much into it. Um, from a feature perspective, it's using the JSP feature. Now, of course, the things that I also want to do is I want to install the application, right? So you can go to the Solomon World Bank server. This is the application that we're talking about in here. And I will walk through it in a second. I just want to go ahead and just simply um, um, load it up into my server that I just created. So I can right click on the server and do add and remove and you will see the um, cell rest API demo is going to be there. Do an add um, and then finish. Now one thing I want to bring to your attention, um, I don't know if you noticed this already, but it's if you, when I showed you the server configuration file before I installed the application it had only the um, JSP in it. Now, when I installed the application, because that application makes usage of the local connector, and also since I'm using JAXRS, as you see that um, Eclipse automatically added these two features into your server XML file. So that's how actually smart and being made easy to use. So let me go ahead and start the server. So I just highlight it here and click Start. And that will obviously start not just the server, but will also start the application that I have. And oh look, here you go, the application is now up and running. It's amazing actually if you can, if you, you probably did not notice, but the server started in, 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 in just a couple of seconds. Um, so now we're ready to go if I want to run the application. But before I do any running of the application, I want to walk you through it. So I'm going to assume that you've gone through the demo that I referenced earlier, and I'm talking about this demo here, I mean this tutorial here that exists on YouTube today that you can look for. Um, and as you see that from a, um, resources Let's look at the code I have the um, bank rates and this is just an object that I create to hold the data that I'm trying to collect which is the name the rates and the type um, my main um, um, resource or the, the the kind of the gut of my application is going to be this bank rates resource and this is the one that has um, the API's the rest API's that I'm exposing um, and of course this one if you look at it it's um, there is, uh, per the JAX RS spec, um, the, the items that we need to worry about is you need to define this, this um, bank rates a application, which extends application, which is a JAVAX WS RS core application. And from there, you just, I mean, literally copy and paste the content of what you see in here. And that's really all you need to do. This is just needed per spec. And this is where I defined that my bank rates resource, which is what you have in here, is my actual um, resource that needs to be exposed. Now the way it works is from within the URL, you will see resources in the URL when you try to get to those resources. I mean, JAXRS is kind of uses the um, CRUD operations to get access to resources, and it uses HTTP, and that's the, the beauty of it and, and why it became very successful, because it's really easy to use. 
So if I go into my bank um, rates resource and the multiple APIs that I have that I exposed, um, so I have this one that gives me gets rates, all the rates that are available, returns a JSON object, and it's a get, as you see. Um, the one that we're going to be using heavily um, throughout to expose the API and also to use within the um, um, the, the mobile application is the get rates record by type. And the types, as you see in here, um, I have short, long, and jumbo. And these are kind of the records, and this is the interest rates that I will be returning. Um, they're hard-coded values, obviously, just for the purpose of the demo in here. So let me just walk through um, the this one, um, this particular example. You'll see that I'm taking two parameters, and there are two kinds of parameters. You can do a path param, and, and I'll show you an example of this, just like we're doing in this particular case with the get rates by ID. And of course, the second one is the query param, and this is when you actually enter the values on the URL with a question mark followed by the name equals value properties. So this would be, for example, type equals short and f name equals to Solomon, and that's what we're going to do to run this particular application, um, which is already installed and ready to go. I've added a couple of system outs just so that you can see the values when we actually do run it, so that you see that it's coming from the server that we're dealing with in here. So. Um, I'm not going to go again in great details on how you define it, but this is what you have right now. Um, if you, one of the beauties of, of, of using the Eclipse um, um, plugin, uh, which basically, by the way, it is using um, the same plugin that comes with the RAD. Um, these are the pieces that the RAD team uh, basically made available as part of the Eclipse plugin to allow you to develop Java EE applications if you want to, without necessarily the need to buy um, a RAD solution. Um, because RAD does offer a lot of um, rich features that are um, that will help you tremendously in your as a developer in your day-to-day -day activity and in your development and test and um, anal analytics um, of your application um, perspective. So I will leave that. That's not the purpose of this demo, of course, and that's why I'm only using Eclipse. So if I go under since it's it's uh, RESTful services, there would be a services folder and REST under it. And as you see, I have this is the rates that I'm dealing with in here, and I have the get records by type, and I have the get records, um, get rates record by type, and of course get um, rates by ID. And if you remember when I talked about by ID, I said it takes a param, um, a path param. So if I go in here on the and right click on it, you'll see show URL, and you will see in here that it has. Um, the, the actual um, host, the port, and then after that I get into the application name, which is typical. But then I get the resources, and that's what was defined inside of the bank resource application when I showed you earlier. And of course, after that you get into the rates, which is what I have in here, and that's when I defined it as, um, I'll go back in here, and you'll see that there's the rates. And of course, there is a default get for each one, and in this particular case, the default get was this particular item, um, which is the rates, and that's how I can get access to it. So I can basically replace um, the ID uh, with the actual rate that I want. So anything in the parentheses ID, I would replace it with what I want, which is zero, one, or two. Okay. So let's see another one, and and this is another one also that would be helpful. Um, this is the URL, and as you see, this is the one that I'm doing get records, get rates records by type. So this is the actual URL that I'm going to be using, okay? And as you see, I don't have any parentheses that's for the properties, and that's because I'm using them as query parameters. I am not defining them. So let's go ahead and try to actually make a call to that method. Let me just kind of make this one smaller so you can see the output. So I click in here, and I type it, and then I say, well, type, um, I'm sorry, I need actually a question mark, and I'm going to say type equals to short, and I'm going to say and, and it's going to be f name equals to Solomon. So what that basically says is that I am interested in calling that method um, that is um, has a path of records. So I went up to rates, which is what this gets me to this particular class. Um, and then um, I want the records one. Okay, so here we come to the records. And that one actually ends up having two parameters. Um, again, I'm not calling the API itself because it doesn't matter. I could change whatever I want with it. That's what matters right here per spec. And then the parameters are um, type, and I said, okay, type equals short, and f name equals to Solomon, and that's what f name is. Okay. And as like I said, given that these are query parameters, I was adding them this way. 
So if I go ahead and click OK, now you will see that I got the record and the record for the short and the rate is 3.375. And as you see in here from my system out, type is short and rate is 3.375 and the name is Solomon. So indeed that showed that this particular application does work exactly like it's supposed to and I am able to use the APIs, um, um, the, the REST way of calling these APIs from my browser um, to basically have access to my REST API and get the results. And as you see now, I have a, I have a JSON object being returned and that's what the produces um, shows you. Um, so now we got with this part too. Now what I'm going to show you in the next part is I'm going to actually now start taking this API, which is the get rates record by type, and I will expose that within the API management. So I'm going to go ahead in part three of this demo and um, create all the necessary parts in the API management from defining my, we already defined my organization, I call it the Solomon World Bank, but I'm going to define the resources and everything else that's needed to get this end-to-end -end application working. So I will see you in a little bit um, in, in the next part of the video, which is part number three.